I'm Marcy McDonald, the online course doctor, here to help you improve your own courses by unpacking what works, what doesn't work, and helping you use these tips to make your own courses better. So today starts the mark of a new interview series, what they went through behind the scenes with the best of the best online course creators. The goal of the series is to illuminate the process of creating an online course by talking with those who have achieved a high level of success, but not always as easily as you might think. Today's guest is Joel Sartori. He's an award-winning photographer, speaker, author, conservationist, and the 2018 National Geographic Explorer of the Year. He's a regular contributor to National Geographic Magazine, and he's an Eagle Scout, a good guy at heart. He's known for his sense of humor and his Midwestern work ethic. So Joel specializes now in documenting endangered species and landscapes around the world. He's the founder of the Photo Arc, a 25 year documentary project to save species and habitat. Well, Joel and I worked together on a course called The Fundamentals of Photography, produced by The Great Courses. He went on to do a second course, The Fundamentals of Travel Photography, which I also advised on. I loved working with him. He made me laugh a lot. We worked our buns off, and his courses are first rate and still probably the best selling at the company that they ever produced. So Joel, welcome. It's great to see you again. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today about your experiences making online courses. Marcy, you say jump and I say how high. You know that. <laughs> um, I've got some tips on how you just delivered that introduction, if you don't mind. Well, let's just start in and we'll critique that, okay? Okay, just sure, make it better. <laughs> no, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. I, I, uh, I had a really good experience with the teaching company. I think I, did, I participated in four courses and uh, you were behind them, so I'm, I'm uh, happy to do this. Great, Joel. Well, I'm going to start with a story about you, which I hope you'll elaborate on. So probably nobody except a handful of people realized that when you came to audition at the great courses, you flunked. Yeah, I failed so, my audition. Tell me what you remember about the experience of being in that studio delivering a course professor lecture style. Yeah, so I remember that I went in there. I, I had had a sec successful career um, giving talks around the world, mainly in the US, about my career and about conservation and the things we all need to do to make the planet better. And it was, there's humor in it. And, it, and I tried it on a lot of audiences over the years. And I had this kind of talk and it was really polished. And I gave that talk and, and um, I thought, you know, it was fine. You know, I mean, the camera people in the studio, they can't laugh, but I thought I bet they're laughing on the inside. And so I went back to the green room and, and then the, the two course producers, the, the people, the, the line people, the people in the trenches with me, uh, came into the room, uh, Tony and Kat, and they were all ashen faced, like something bad had just happened. Something really stinky had just happened. And they were like shaking. I was like, Hey, so how was that? You know, I mean, cause I just, I just winged it. And they were like, they were shaking their head. They were looking down. They were avoiding eye contact, all these things. They're like, somebody's going to break up with you. And um, I was like, what? And they said, well, you just, you just gave, us, gave us your talk. And it was, that's not what we do here. We're, we teach people how to be better at whatever they want to be better at. I was like, oh, well, I thought that would give them some insights. And they're like, not, not the way we do things here. You're, you're here to teach. You're not just here to, to show off or give these you know fancy talks that get people to laugh. I mean, you're here to teach photography. So I didn't know what to think. And it was clear that, that everything would have to be just, it was clear that I'd failed my audition. They were very unsure whether I'd be allowed to have another audition. audition. They said a lot of, most of the people that come in here and audition don't make it. We only take the, the best. And um, I was like, oh. And so I went out to Dulles Airport and sat there and waited to get my flight. And that's when you showed up, as I recall. Right. I, I had seen the audition, and I was concerned about how it went. What was wrong with it exactly? I still am bruised. What was wrong with the audition exactly? Well, actually, you, you named it that the goal of a course is to really teach people how to become better at what it is they're trying to 
learn, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's rocket science or geophysics or photography. Mm. The job of the teacher is to unpack the information and explain it in a way that helps them understand it better than they did before. Right. But what you gave was a talk. And a talk is something that you deliver to a big audience, typically, and you're just trying to wow them with your repartee, with mm -hmm. your stories, with your pictures. And you worked all from your images. The images were, of course, incredible, but we didn't learn anything. Right. We right. had a great time on, on the story, but we didn't get anything out of it. And so I actually caught up with you at the airport because I really wanted it to work. And I w had been working behind the scenes to beg for another audition for you. <laughs> and what we talked about is taking the workshop experience and converting that into a kind of a classroom experience, the online experience. Right, that's right. That's what we did, isn't it? And that took a while. I mean, that wasn't something we did overnight. No, no, it wasn't. Uh, so I don't know if you recall some of some of the things we did differently versus that first straight line talk. Well, I know that I sat down, I came home and I never thought it was going to work out really anyway. I just figured um, I wasn't professor material. And so I came home and I had a young lady who um, was an intern. Um, mom of two based out of uh, central Nebraska that would come in. And she really wanted to learn photography. And I hadn't paid much attention to her because I was gone a lot. But I said, okay, Amy, why don't we do this? Every, twice a week or once a week, whatever the deadline was, I need to meet. I need to do, you know, I needed to do something. So I, um, I just kind of worked up this thing where I could give her a general introduction on photography. And, um, and that's how we did the entire course was I had Amy over here in my studio and I used my computer, same one here and um, just had an outline and then talked about that topic for 45 minutes or so. And then just talked to her about it and just a conversation. It's just a conversation with a friend of mine about everything I'd ever learned about depth of field or shutter speed or the quality of light or the value of a clean background, the value of research and talking to, to subjects in the field. Everything I'd ever learned working for National Geographic Society over like, 16 years and uh, flash and and um, perspective and 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 um, and then we typed that up and we cleaned that up and and um, we got it down to a half hour the best stuff on each topic and did that and had like 26 or 27 of these lectures and thinned those out to 24 and that that I remember became the base for the um, the course right Isn't that how it went Exactly. So you, you parsed out what were the most important facets of your work yeah. and unpacked your own brain to say all these things that you now did automatically. How did you walk backwards to the beginner's eyes mm -hmm. to say, oh, right, I need to include this. I need to include that. And I need to explain this. And then we put the whole thing together less like a lecture and more like a workshop. So if you recall, we had an assignment that everyone would do just as if they were on assignment with you for National Geographic. And we did a lot of things out in the field, shooting, watching you do what you do. We used note cards. I remember standing under the very hot sun with a big, mm -hmm billboard almost where we just wrote out your your three talking points right right which is how you worked best a script did not work for you right no it just comes across as wooden to me i mean i'd rather be i'm not good at memorizing lines but i can sure talk to points because i know what i want to say usually i'm lucky i have a mind that works that way but it's not for everybody it was for me it was the only way to go because it comes off as spontaneous I'm, I'm also not a gear freak. I don't really care that much about camera gear. I need to use it for the, for the job and I use Nikon gear and I love, love the way that it's easy to work and doesn't fail. But I'm not, I didn't want this course to be really, really heavily technical because number one, I don't think people will remember it. And number two, cameras are changing every year. There's some amazing mirrorless cameras that are out now. And, uh, and, and I just thought, 
this course needs to last and it needs to be about seeing and thinking. The camera is the box. It's the mind behind it that creates the images and that will never change. And it's about storytelling. It's about being dis discerning and discriminating. Don't shoot everything. Don't, don't. There's a saying I use all the time, whether I'm teaching a workshop or I'm in the studio at the teaching company, uh, which is the answer is no, absolutely not. And the question is, should I take a picture of this? No, no, please don't. Don't send it to me. <laughs> if it's bad, don't send it to me. I shoot my own bad pictures every day. So um, seriously, I, I like seeing students work, uh, you know, but they need to really think through it and think about, okay, what have we been taught? And, and does this work? Does this not work? Um, they need to think through um, how they're doing. And another really important fact is if you think your work is just fantastic, it's probably not. <laughs> because the best photographers I know are very critical of their own work. They're their, heart, they're their own harshest critics. So that's why I like photography in a way because you can never make it perfect. It can never be, it can never be done. It can never be finished. I'm still learning about light all the time. And that's exciting and it keeps it fresh. And, and, and if you're uncomfortable a little bit, it forces you to do a better job, I think. Well, I guess we managed to make you do that by making you uncomfortable to begin with because you did do an outstanding job. Sure. With you, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm really glad. Um, that you showed up at Dulles Airport and talked me down off the ledge there. That was, that was great, you know? <laughs> and, um, and the course went on, to, that was Fundamentals of Photography, the first one, and that turned out to be a very, very, of course it did very well. And it was because you figured out how um, to just let me be myself and deliver it in a way that I felt comfortable doing it. That's a big, that's a big deal. And I also think that people really, really can't stand being read to. I've been to a lot of lectures and even been to a workshop or two where the, where the, the, the information is presented in a series of PowerPoint slides that are sentences with a bullet in front of each. And I can read that sheet. I can read three bullet points per, per image uh, in five seconds. I don't need somebody to spend 10 minutes. You know, he's, he's, the person's got, got 10 PowerPoint slides each with each with uh, three bullets on it, and and that's it. I mean, I or twenty or hell, I went to one the other day that had about a hundred PowerPoint slides with four or five bullet points, and the lady just read. She just read in a monotone voice, and I thought, well, <clears throat> one is I can never get this hour back in my life, but also I thought, wow, she makes she makes other people's talks look great. <laughs> really much more in favor of video courses for that reason because you can't just stall out watching a PowerPoint slide so you do that extremely well and actually I think I started to learn that from you watching you deliver from a few notes it was oh, really? brilliant yeah. very energetic I use the I have pictures I put in my my presentations whether it's teaching company or I'm giving a lecture I do a lot of public speaking and those pictures cue memories, usually several memories of each thing. We could speak about the quality of light. <clears throat> we could talk about depth of field, or we could talk about the fact that this guy was nearly killed by a killer pig in the Amazon about a week after we concluded our shoot. We can go any direction we want, but we have a visual aid there, or a crutch, if you want to think of it that way. It's there to provide cover and, just, and give you some time to basically continue with whatever your narrative thread is. So that's how, that's how I work it. And, and um, I think about every talk, I try to tailor each, each talk. Let's say, let's consider public speaking as a lesson. It is in a way, <clears throat> tailor it to each place I go. Yeah, that's, that's great. And you bring up a great point, which is that you have to direct your teaching and how you're teaching to the audience that's in front of you. You do. You don't want to hit them with something that's super advanced or complicated if they've just bought their cameras. Right. Um, mixed mixed uh, classes where you have advanced and beginners. I think that's where you need us, which is kind of like the fundamentals of photography in a way. If it's a mixed class, you want to be able to give something for everybody and um, do it in an entertaining way so that even people that have been shooting for quite a while, they'll want to stick around and listen. Right, right. And I, I think you also 
when you were talking about something, you would lay out the general principle, give examples, and then you'd kind of up the ante for that next level of photographer by talking about, well, you could also do this, or this is what you can start to look forward. So you kind of stepped people into that and right. appealed to multiple levels that way, very right. successfully. Right, we try to be entertaining at all times, and we don't throw them off into the deep end of the pool if we don't know whether or not they can swim. Right, yeah. right. So, but at the same time, we try to make it so that course is, is good for anybody, even somebody who's been shooting a long time. You know, like, like I just think, if, I, if there was a photographer whose work I really liked, and they were gonna tell me how they did it, I would watch that course. I would like to watch that course. Mm -hmm. If provided I had the time, it wasn't going all the time for the photo art. Right, right. So let me change tactics here. What frustrated you most about making any of the online courses you did? Um, well, one of the things that frustrated me is that they have a set way of doing them, a very set way. You, um, and I understand why. I mean, you have to stay on this carpet which is helpful. It's a tactile sensory thing. You can feel it with your feet. If you're off the carpet, you're out of the, out of the lights in the camera range. Mm -hmm. You had to stay there. Um, there was no live audience. So nobody was laughing at my jokes. They had to be quiet. And so if I was doing anything funny, it was hard. You know, I imagine that's what it's like to be an actor in a comedy in a, on a movie set. The camera people can't laugh, you know. Um, the, uh, and just the fact that it, there's a lot of material. I mean, I've been working for Geographic for like 30 years now as a contractor, but that's a lot to go through. And uh, even in 24 half hour long lessons, we try to make every lesson different and worthwhile. So we're not being repetitive at all. Um, but that, that to me, it's, it's a lot of work to put together one of those courses. It's a lot of work when people say, hey, so-and-so has approached me to do a course. And then once it's written, you have to write it for the ear so that it can be spoken and listened to. And, and fortunately, I recorded my lectures in, in a conversational style with a friend. And that's why the course came off as informal, because it was informal. It was just me talking to a friend about what I thought about photography and what worked and what did not work. It's just a, it's a course on how to see well and how to be you know, kind of a good person along the way to your subjects, don't torture them. And, uh, that's what helped a ton is that it wasn't just dry, dry as can be. It was juicy, you know, it was fun and it was lively. And, and, uh, and my friend, Amy, she would, she would interject with questions. Of course, those, those questions got posed in the course as well. We just, if it worked and I liked it and I thought this is how I would teach a workshop, then it stayed in. Um, and the, and what I liked about it is that, um, Tony and Kat uh, on that first course, they let me do that. And it was different for them. It was a, it was kind of, it was a subject that had not been done yet by teaching company. They had done a lot of things on astrophysics and, and how the brain perceives classical music, but they had not done anything like photography. And so that was a new genre for them. And so they were in uncharted waters as well. Uh, and they didn't try to push their, and nor did you try to push how you thought it should be done on me. You just let me do my thing. Right, right. Well, it was a conversation and we all listened to each other yeah. and, and made it a conversational course so that we did feel like we were in a workshop. It is fun to work with me. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. yeah, you're a taskmaster. I remember getting up at, I don't know, five in the morning or something and going out to shoot in Nebraska frost on the ground and you had these girls, one of them was your daughter and a friend in party dresses, barefoot. We we're all freezing to death and you took the most incredible shots and we did a fantastic segment of the course. Yeah, well, I just told them, look, if you're cold, if you start running around like you're supposed to, you'll warm right up. So get out <laughs> there and start twirling. So you know, what do you think um, is the role that passion plays in how you teach? or in what you choose to teach. Is that important that you're passionate about it? Well, it's everything. People can tell if you're just going through the motions and you don't care. 
Yeah, the life of the party type thing, that's a passionate person if you're the life of the party, right? So you, um, you just know that that's an attractive quality to have is to be passionate, fired up. People like that. And uh, I like I, all the friends that I have, literally all the friends that I have are very passionate people. And that means they're very good at what they do and um, fun to be around. I totally agree. If there's no passion, there's, there's no teaching, really. So. Yeah. yeah, we've had, you and I have had teachers, I'm sure, growing up that, that were there way too long and the passion was <laughs> yeah. gone. And they were using some lesson plan that they developed when they were a uh, student teacher. And that, what, that lesson plan was threadbare by then. We were getting the bottom of the barrel by the time we went through. You have to really tell good stories and tell them why this matters. Why does this matter? Why are you talking to me about the histogram on the back of my camera? Well, because it'll, it'll, it'll save you five or six years of bad exposures. Asking why and getting your students to ask why and asking why about what it is you're teaching and why you're teaching it right. and why you're teaching it that way. All of that is tied to passion and it's tied to really stellar teaching. Yeah, and you'd mentioned, you know, what's the difference between teaching a workshop and teaching a live workshop and doing, a, doing something where you're recording a lecture series? Mm -hmm. Well, the lack of a lot of live audience uh, really is kind of a vibe killer in a way. You have to be pretty familiar with your subject matter and pretty fired up about it to pull that off because you don't have anybody to feed off of. You don't have smiling faces that are nodding to help encourage you to, to run on down the road. And so you really, you really do need to be fired up and passionate uh, to do that by yourself in front of a camera. It's not, it, it's not nearly as easy as teaching a live, work, a live workshop because, you know, if the workshop gets a little slow, you can come back from a break or lunch and say, now, what do you guys want to talk about? Let's do Q&A. Well, that's a good way to kill some time, but it's not a great way to teach if you, if you really have a lot of ground to cover. Right, right. Well, speaking of passion, you are focused on your mission almost completely right now. It is. Look, I wore the shirt. I wore the shirt. It's got the photo arc logo. Can you see that? The photo yes, arc logo. There it is. Photo arc. So taking pictures for the photo arc project. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to talk about that in just a second. But if, if you could make a course, and I know you're not making courses anymore, but if you could make a course tied to your mission, yeah. regardless of whether it made money or how much it costs, Budgets, no problem. What would you make a course on and why would you make it? On the photo well, arc? Yes. Well, the course would be about nature being on the run, about the fact that we are eliminating all the habitats around the world that we can as fast as we can, and that, and that we're going to drive half of all species to extinction by the turn of the century. That's a rough guess. It could be worse uh, when you're thinking about insects. So here's why it matters. If we eliminate the birds, bees, bats, butterflies, flies, animals that pollinate our fruits and vegetables, well, that's bad. I like fruits and vegetables. Uh, a couple of vegetables I don't like that much, but we don't need to go into that here. And then um, if we eliminate the rainforests of the world to, make, to, to, to grow palm oil, an additive in foods and other things, um, if we eliminate the rainforests of the world, we're not just killing off the orangutans and the hornbills. Hell, we're going to kill ourselves off because we're going to disrupt the rain cycle on the planet. And the rain cycle, people think the food comes from the grocery store. It does in a way, but it has to be grown in nature. Most crops are not irrigated. So to grow crops, you need rain in the right amount at the right time of the year. And if you cut down the rainforest, which regulate that rain cycle, we are going to be left with crops that don't grow. It'll be too wet or too dry or too hot or too cold. And that will mean starvation for millions of people. So the bridge is out in a very major way. And I, that's the goal of photo arc is to use cute pictures of animals or charismatic pictures of animals on black and white backgrounds using studio lighting to look the animals in the eye and to get them to care about the plight of all these animals, using those animals as leaders, taking people by the hand into the tent of conservation. And so th that's, the, that's the scoop. That's a, long, that's a long version, but the photo arc in a nutshell is uh, we, use, we use studio portraits of animals to get people inspired to care about the natural world while, this, while there is still time to save it. Right. Very yeah. well put, Joel. And if I've had practice, Marcy. 
Yes, I know, I know that you have. And if there's somebody out there watching this who has so much money that they'd like to donate it to creating the course that will explain that all great. the information that goes behind the photo arc, that would be great. If you don't have that much money, then just donate it to the photo arc. Even yeah, 25 or, bucks will or, help get Joel to yeah. another zoo to take a picture. You bet. Or National Geographic. They, they fund the project now, and so mm -hmm. National Geographic as well. They're a great, right. great, great organization. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, that, that's the photo arc, and that's uh, 25 years or so. It's how long it's going to take. We're 14 years into it or 13 years into it now. About 9,000 species photographed. Um, the goal is to get all, there's between 12 and 15,000 species in the world's zoos and aquariums and wildlife rehabbers and private breeders. And the goal is to get all of them uh, by the time I'm 70. If I live that long. Hopefully I will. Feel good. So another, another 14, 15 years to go. And that's it. That's it. And it came along at the perfect time because, um, you know, the, the, uh, the kind of, for a lot of the larger animals that live a while, these are the last ones we'll see in captivity. We have to have them in captivity so that we can light them, put them on backdrops and light them. They're all actually, we build sets at zoos and the animals are shifted in and they, they're used to having lunch in this spot with a black background. And when I show up, we just take the picture and we work quickly. And, and so this is kind of the last time period you could do that because the zoo and, and aquarium inventories are going to shrink because they won't be able to get animals from the wild anymore. And most of the animals I photograph now, in fact, are born and raised in human care. So it's not that big a deal uh, and they're, they're used to people. Well, before we wrap up, are there any words of wisdom you'd like to add for folks out there who are making an online course or thinking about making one? Yeah, yes, Keep it in, make it interesting. Make it so interesting that somebody who doesn't really even care about your subject would stick around and, and listen or watch because you're telling great stories. Who doesn't love a great story? It's how we communicate a lot. Um, loosen up and have a good time. You know, it's, it's over quickly. It may seem like a lot of work to prepare for it, but it's over quickly. And you'll look back and smile if you enjoyed yourself. And the audience can tell whether you're having fun or not. If you're just plowing a field, just trying to get through it to the last page, I can tell you right now, it's not gonna be very engaging. I think that it's, it's, it's really important to be honest with people. Don't hold information back. Don't tell them what you think they wanna hear. Do the kind of course that you want to give, you know? It's like photography. Don't take the kind of pictures you think other people want to see. Express yourself. Shoot the kind of pictures you want to take. And that's what I admire most about people that are teaching these courses is, is that they're, if somebody's great at what they do, I don't care what the subject is, you want to pay attention. You can't help it. If they're great at what they do, they will be so passionate and have so many good stories to tell you. It's very entertaining. And you're going to learn along the way. So that's the best, that's the best it can be. That's it. That's a perfect description. Be interesting. You know if you're boring. Don't bore yourself. Don't bore us. Yeah. If, if, you, can't, not, if you can't figure that out, you don't belong teaching. Really. If, if people say, I want to work for National Geographic, and they think that they're really good, and they're not, if they can't figure out whether or not they're good, whether or not they're passionate, they don't belong there, right? And they, you don't belong teaching if you're not really fired up about it because if you love what you do you will be great at it um that's that's it so teach what you love teach what you know teach what you love and do it and be yourself don't worry about how you're coming off don't worry about how you look whether you look too fat or too skinny or too young or too old or too short or too tall just 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 if you if you speak from the heart about what you love and you have and you have little note cards that go over what it is that you want to make sure that you talk about you're golden you're golden i totally agree joel so that is a perfect summation of everything i try to teach people when i'm teaching them how to make outstanding online courses good so thanks for taking the time to be with us today now my friends i want you to be sure to check out the links that are at the bottom of the video we've got links to joel's courses we've got links to the photo art project and of course, we've got a sign up link so that you can subscribe and get wonderful juicy tidbits from me every week in your inbox. Think about donating to the photo arc and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.